Greetings, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Greetings from Javan Jyoti Ashram on this first Sunday of Advent. Welcome and thank you for joining me as you do each week in these Burning Bush Encounters series. As we seek to encounter Father, Son, and Spirit, speaking to us through the Sunday Mass readings and my reflections on these readings. My reflection this Sunday is entitled, Will You Accept This Invitation? And the context upon which I base my reflection is the hope offered in this first Sunday of Advent. The theme based on the readings is Christians are offered an invitation. And that is, come and taste the goodness of the Lord. As a practical consideration, to do this, Christians need to just stop, drop everything we are doing and find time for God. Is there anything better than tasting the goodness of the Lord and climbing the mountain to be with God? In our time, this means choosing special moments of our day to set aside just for God. He's waiting for us during these designated times. Advent like Lent gives us the perfect time to stop and to take stock of our spiritual lives, but also of our everyday lives, because the latter affects the former and vice versa. And as a small testimony, every time Advent begins, God always shows me that he's waiting for me to come to him in a new way, in a special way, to do something different for him, like Lent. In Lent, we always give up something for Lent, right? We sacrifice something, fasting, or we may do more in order to prepare ourselves for Easter, for the resurrection victory of Jesus, so we can join in and celebrate and benefit from that resurrection victory. But Advent is also that time as we stop and we prepare for Jesus' coming as well. And as we prepare and remember that we are continually preparing for his second coming. And one of the things that Jesus has showed me multiple times is that he is ready to speak to me, but I have to find time for him. He's speaking to me every day and I'm hearing him and I'm understanding things that he's telling me every day. But in Advent and Lent, in Advent I've found particularly, has been a time where he has called me and invited me to just come to him. Come to him because he's ready to tell me things, to teach me things. One of the ways I've done this in the past is doing a 33 days consecration to Jesus through Mary. And this is the St. Louis de Montfort's 33 day consecration. And I've found that particularly powerful for me in listening to God in going inward and taking that extra time, just preparing myself to receive. And I've consecrated myself on the new year, the first day of the year, the year dedicated, that day, sorry, dedicated to Mary, Mother of God. And I found that to be very powerful for me in the past. And one of the things that Jesus also has done for me during Advent is the first day of Advent or the beginning of the Advent. He spiritually purges me and he has done this through actual physical purging where I've had, I don't want to say diarrhea, but I've been, I've seen myself purged, physically purged almost in preparation for what I have to receive spiritually. That physical purging is almost like God showing me my spiritual purging that needs to take place in order to receive him in a new and more powerful way in Advent. And I talk about one particular incident about that physical purging in my book, Jesus Speaks to Me, Whispers of Mercy, Whispers of Love, 
that Jesus did want Advent, that I was physically purged and that made me aware for the first time of that physical purge symbolizing the spiritual purging that was going to take place in Advent as I took time to be with him, to get to know Jesus better. Another way is through reading scriptures. I do the day three days consecration, but also reading the Gospel of Luke is a beautiful way to take us through the first day of December through Christmas Day as we read all the chapters of Luke, a chapter a day. So there are many different ways we can prepare for Jesus' coming as we remember Jesus' first coming, but also as we each year go closer and closer to our death, the end of our lives here in earth, in preparation for encountering Jesus and in preparation for that second coming. If we are alive, that we will be prepared, but also at the second coming, those who are in death, but also rise in a huge victory with Jesus. This is my little testimony then. This is a time when Jesus has called me to prepare just as much as I prepare during Lent. I prepare as well during Advent by sacrificing, by going inward, and by also doing more for him and with him and through him. In the first reading, Isaiah 2, 1 to 5, Isaiah had a vision of multitudes climbing the Lord's mountain to receive instruction from him so that God could guide them in their ways. Isaiah reveals, this is what Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah in Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest mountain and raised above the hills. All nations shall stream towards it. Many peoples shall come and say, Come, let us climb the Lord's mountain to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may instruct us in his ways and we may walk in his paths. In the responsorial psalm, Psalm 122, the response is, Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. The Lord's house is the place we go to in order to receive instruction. It is, however, not the only place. We can go directly to God by reading His Word and through our personal prayer. As I mentioned, we can go to God through doing particular prayers that we may not do otherwise by reading the Gospels like the Gospel of Luke, but also by physically going to the Lord's house, by going to church, for those who are Catholic, going to Mass, and for all other Christians, by going to worship on Sundays. Advent is a time to make this move towards God. The second reading, Romans 13, 1 to 14, challenges us to awake from sleep because the day of salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. It is time to conduct ourselves in the right way. That is, as people who live in the light, not darkness. Such a people will desire to seek the Lord, to find Him, and to follow Him unreservedly holding back nothing. The time is always now because no one knows when the Lord will come or when he or she will face God in death. In the Gospel reading, Matthew 24, 37 to 44, Jesus reminds his disciples of the story of Noah to teach them that as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. As a practical application, the experience of Noah and his family mirror what it would be like in the end times for those who accept the Lord's invitation 
as well as for those who do not. At the time of the second coming of Jesus, many will not be spiritually prepared and will suffer accordingly. People who do not take heed to God's invitation, who do not choose to seek him or to find him, or to find time for him, will find themselves in a predicament that is unimaginable. As a practical consideration, despite what might be considered as an inevitable fate when we choose to sin, God's mercy is extended to all because of Jesus' salvific work, which offers hope to every Christian believer. English mystic Julian of Norwich, an anchorage which is a cloistered or recluse, who was in East Anglia at, a, at age 30, became so terribly ill that she believed she was going to die. As she faced this situation, Julian experienced several powerful visions of Jesus, which she documented and later expanded on. These writings became the showings of Julian of Norwich. In her visions, Julian recognized that God was not angry and vengeful. These teachings given to her in her visions filled her heart with humility and empathy for all suffering beings and a burning yearning for union with God, which she refers to as wanting. This is on page 15. Julian reassures us all that the suffering we cause ourselves through our sinful acts is the only punishment that we will endure because God is all love and is incapable of wrath. We read that on page 16. Thus Julian believes that we should not waste time stuck in guilt, but pick up ourselves and move on, remembering who we really are. We are children of God, made in the image of God, redeemed by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. This is the source of our hope. Julian teaches us that our failings are really opportunities. Through our failings, we yearn for God. We learn, we grow, we transform, we gain wisdom, and that wisdom is used to help others to do likewise. As a practical application, God is love, is mercy, is compassion. God loves us so much that he's always there waiting for us. The moment we make the slightest move towards God, like any loving parent would, God nudges us to make another step, and another, and another, because God desires only the best for us. God desires to be in relationship with us. That best requires our cooperation, which is our self-surrender and total commitment to Him. And Julian of Norwich, who experienced God as a feminine, experienced God in the feminine, gives us that image of God, the parent, that loving mother, who no matter what we do, is always waiting there for us with open, loving arms. Advent is a time to make that first step towards God. God will then lead us into a deeper and more intimate relationship with Him. The invitation is yours to take God's hand and to walk with Him, to journey with Him this Advent season. I leave you with this prayer. Lord, I do not want to miss any opportunity you offer me to taste your goodness, so that when my time comes to depart this world, I will be right with you. Amen. 
God bless you. And may this week ahead and this time of Advent as we journey towards Christmas and Jesus is coming, that we will truly find time, more time to be with God, to listen to him, to respond to him in new ways that we have never before. God bless you.